Hello, everybody, and welcome to the official Clown Town Podcast. I'm your host, Chief and Jehovah, also known as Jacob. Joining me today is my co-host, as always, Dino. Heyo. And my other co-host, Jared. Hello. And we are going to be starting up today talking about Christmas, actually. We're gonna Christmas just passed by not a, not too long ago. Uh, but before we get into this show, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, us, the Chief and Jehovah Variety Channel. <laughs> we are it's, here, and English. we have memberships. If you want to support the channel, you'll get exclusive access to the members-only sections of the podcast. We Spicy also... Shit. So if you want to support us, click that join button below for 99 cents a month. We greatly appreciate your views and your money. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> That was so, every what? Yes. We are being sponsored by ourselves. Yes. Who is in turn sponsored by people? Why? Who? I don't make the rules. I just relay the message to the people. I'm not entirely sure that's what you've done. That is what I'm going. To... You could <laughs> that... just you could just do a PBS joke, and it would be just as. Effective. That's basically what it is. <laughs> it really is. I, we are the PBS podcast. <laughs> we are a PBS podcast. Educational podcast. How's everybody's right. Christmas? Everything I've heard right. from this. Nice and quiet. Everybody's Christmas. Hey, I, viewer, you you listening to this podcast and or watching this podcast, but you really should just be listening to this podcast. There's nothing visual going on. How was your Christmas? Leave a comment down below. I hope it was nice. I hope it was good. Yeah, I hope everybody stayed safe. Hope everybody stayed safe, stayed warm. <clears throat> I had a good time. My my was pretty good. I had I had a good time with family. It was, it was nice. It was nice to see yeah. everybody. Dino, how'd yours go? I know you're so peaceful. You Very, yeah. It's look. I it seems on paper like oh. They didn't do shit. That's so bad. Listen, to being the host or like being like the little guinea pig to fucking help set up big parties for Christmas and Thanksgiving events, it is it is just a relief every so often to have as, a break. <laughs> someone who has been the host or made the meals for these things more than once, I can completely understand dodging it. I did that this year. This year, I dodged it all. Oh. Got lucky. Got to take a nice break. the old sibling thing, and yeah, you know, it's... just family friends as well. It goes from like being like a you know thing of like maybe like eight or you know ten people to like fifteen people or seventeen. And it's just it's madness. Madness. Yeah. Fuck yeah, that. There's some people out there who have like big families. Yeah, mine. I could never. Oh yes, we we have like forty plus people at a single oh, event. Yeah, I, I swear to God, they I just keep scrolling, dude. Dude, I have an ex that had a hundred and fifty something. Dear I was, fuck, I don't know how there were. They were like rabbits. I don't understand it. There, there was so one time people. we literally rented out a fucking. Um, it was some kind of like recreational, like just you know, it was like a stage and like basically a lunchroom kind of thing. But we basically okay. rented out a place just for family. It was like a hall or something, or like a church yeah, gym yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was exactly, but it, but basically, yeah, like a church gym kind of thing. Yeah, why would a church have a gym? Uh, it's for events and everything. They usually have kitchens it's... in them, and they host um, uh, usually things for like a Bible study or like the uh, youth. The youth stuff. So I was going to talk about the ghetto churches. Like half of them are more like they just so happen to be buildings with gyms in them. <laughs> Bro, no, <laughs> kind of these fuck, dude. I remember I did. I used to do tile jobs, and we would have to travel for these tile jobs. We're going through uh, nearby Charleston, South Carolina, and I pass by a sign that says up ahead on the left or up ahead on the right, Church of Jesus Christ. And we pass by the sign, and a little bit ways down, I see this run-down, rusted-ass fucking trailer that has a big sign out front that says, Church of Jesus Christ in front of it. I'm looking at that, I'm like, that's where you go to get raped. Yeah, that's a, that's that, a creepy... Yeah. That, that is so not safe. At first, honestly. Right. That is but not you safe. you up to it, and you're like, that oh, scary. brother. Like, it is run-down. Like, it's broken on, on one end. It's rusted. I didn't think that 
it could you could you? make it look rusty. It was strange, and it had like a little wooden walkway that could that could occupy. Like I think the best part of it was that the ramp looked new that could accommodate a wheelchair. That trailer basically had a free candy sign for Mormons. Yeah. Just, 100%. oh yeah, we're, we're coming to the Church of Jesus, and now they're going to introduce to Bubba and his large friends. Yeah, I'm talking, the, I'm talking, outside. I'm talking this shit, but watch those be like the nicest people in the world. Oh yeah, they might you know, be. You know, they really probably like they're super nice, like the nicest people on earth. I mean, Dangerous. that's probably why that they have the new ramp. Like, they, they just thought about accessibility, you know, entrances to and get whatnot. their members they're, in. They're right? trying. They're trying, man. Like, I don't even think it was a double wide. I think it was a single wide trailer. No, well. <laughs> yeah, the poor father was sitting there like, oh, I'm tired of having to carry in my parishioners. Ugh, have to have somewhere to worship, I guess. I mean, I, I think you could just, you know, set up a gazebo somewhere and just have it in nature rather than in a small... Well, there, you there, can there are people, church online, dude. There are people. Well, they do that now too. But there, I, I mean, some people do churches on the water. They'll have sermons on the water. Like preacher sorry, will come out there on a boat. Yeah, they'll come out on. Everybody on will come boat? out on the boat. Yeah, people will come out on their boats. If you live, if you live by a lake and there's not really a formal church nearby, but you still want to have a uh, service or whatever you call it, uh, people will ride their little boats out and have a meeting point. Near, near where everybody lives, and they'll just do a sermon on the water. I would love it for a, an excuse to just be on the water. Sure, fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love the water, dude. I love being out on the lake. So nice. Being out on I the mean, lake is one of my favorite things. Like fishing, or just riding really fast in a boat. I love it. Really want to fish again. I need to fish again. Praise the Lord if you want to. Uh, Imagine you're just a fisherman out there trying to fish. It's just like, God, gosh darn it. I don't want to get angry at the preacher. You hear the choir going? (laughs) The choir and everything's going, and you're just sitting there, like, trying to fish. Make sure everything's, like, oh, it's going to be hush hush. We get, like, the big, (laughs) the massive boat with, like, the three rows of just the the choir. We fucking just already got somebody out there with the piano going. Yeah, choir. Yeah. And this poor fisherman is just trying to fish in peace. Yeah. He's out there. He was out there at four AM. He's been catching fish all day. And then he he sees boats approaching. He's like, Oh, okay, that's not too bad. And then more boats start approaching, and then all of a sudden he's surrounded and now he's a part of a church sermon while he's catching fish. Just wanted to go fishing. The power of the Lord starts just tossing fish into his boat. He's like, Where's the challenge? Where's the challenge? That was not the direction I thought that was going to go. Where's the challenge? What? Oh my god. I'm out here for I, sport. I, I thought the scenario was going to go more like, uh, you know, they start fucking, you know, they start doing the worship songs or whatever, and as it starts quieting it down, you know, the, the calm before the, you know, the pastor starts walking up and starts, you know, giving his speech or whatever, and as start it quiets down, you just, you, just, you just hear the fisherman you done? <laughs> so, uh, can, can y'all leave? I was here first. I imagine for some reason, like, uh, the archetype of person to be there is just this really pissed off fisher. Just this angry fucking, God, if these motherfuckers don't finally get off my goddamn lake. I've been here for 60 years. I came out to this spot every Sunday <laughs> and then have to deal with these Fucks trying to do their <laughs> Jesus thing on my land, on my water, on oh, no, my water, <laughs> on my water. It beat me to it. A homie oh, doesn't bitch. even live on the on the lake. He he lives like forty five minutes away and drops his boat <laughs> in every fucking Sunday. But that's why it matters to him because every Sunday it's the only day in the week he has the chance to go out fishing. Hell no. This is the only and time it's... I get away from the kids and my. Bitch, why? <laughs> oh, my God. oh no! I don't want to assume that. I wouldn't man. want to assume that either. It's a man who actually really loves his family, but he does enjoy his alone time. He just uh, wants to have his nice. alone time. Uh, he does not know for him. He's yeah, me and my pa used to come out here every Sunday when I was a boy. Now that he's passed, I just want to 
keep this tradition, so I come out here every Sunday. But then these motherfuckers in their on water the church. Getting deeper. It keeps, I'm getting sad. I don't make me feel for this person. Uh, <laughs> no, feel for him. Understand his anger. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Understand his upset. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan, oh. the fisherman who constantly gets interrupted by the church goers on Sunday. Now I need a, a story on this fisherman. Not right now, but it's just funny how he just became his own person in like the span of three minutes. <laughs> oh, and this all started for me asking how did everybody Christmas go? Yep, this is this is where things have gone. Ultimately, I hope um, everybody had a good Christmas. Yes, that is the important part about all that. Or Hanukkah. Or whatever. Or whatever you celebrate. Or, whatever you celebrate. or if you yeah. don't celebrate Kwanzaa. it, I hope you had a good day. Yeah. I just hope you had a jolly set of days. Hope you just enjoyed time off. All right. So, I heard you got a conspiracy. Oh, yeah, I do have a conspiracy. Yes, I've been hearing about these conspiracies. Okay, the last one was really fun to talk about. I genuinely wasn't expecting to... I mean, mean, you can kind of lead... This one might involve giants, you know. This one has a little bit more, like, believe, like, being able to believe about... Okay. In in my opinion, because it makes a little sense. It makes a a little bit of sense, not a whole lot. Mm. So hold on for continuity, real quick. Yeah. When's the last time you seen a midget, Jared? <laughs> now, does in a show or a movie count? No, IRL in person. Okay. In person. I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm gonna say like. God, it's probably been like almost ten years now. Oh, oh damn! That's what yeah. Okay, so I think it was Sway that said it that like <laughs> there's been like a mass exodus of some sort. Was, yeah, it really has <laughs> been though. <laughs> they just have been disappearing for no fucking reason. Yeah, they're just gone. Actually, wait, no. He said they came from the ground. Yeah, he <laughs> said that they live, they burrow, <laughs> it, they burrow it into the Maybe ground. It's a joke, but I'm starting to believe it more I'm every starting day. Starting even the less I see of like little people. <laughs> okay, okay. Could it just be that we, through science, it has been discovered like people could fix that whole genealogical thing? More than likely, yeah. Yeah. But instead, you choose to believe that Swade. Has discovered <laughs> that they are an underground okay. set of mole people. <laughs> mole people. That's yeah. actually kind of leading into what my topic is about. Oh no! Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> A little god. bit. Right. I mean, All no, right. I don't believe it, but part of me, I mean, deep in my heart, it's just loves fun. The idea. It's just fun. <laughs> I oh, love yeah. the idea. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Okay, hit me with it. All I right. want to hear oh, this. Please. So, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of go off first on my own little tangent about it. So, you know, like hundreds of millions of years ago on this planet, if not billions of years ago on this planet, the formation of the continents were all connected at one point. We can all kind yes. of agree with that. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it's pretty, you kind of see that even after separation, all a lot multiple forms of life have been discovered throughout the world that are very similar to each other on different sides. Yes. So it's bound to be believed that different species, even though they like uh at, through adaptation and evolution, they're adherently the same, but in order for these different environments through separation over millions of years to kind of kind of swap out, change up. Yeah. Yeah. So In a sense, I think it's possible that there were humans already here in North America before, you know, the whole land, the land, land bridge theory, which I mean, it's not really a theory that did happen. People did cross over and made it here, but I still think it's possible that humans already existed in the Southern America, like Mexico region. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. Different species. Yeah, Uh, like different, different hominoids, you know? And then, like, through, through breeding and or, you know, uh, hunting and eating or whatever. Fuckery and death. Yeah, pretty much. Which, I mean, Native tribes did a lot of that throughout all of human history across the fucking world. You know, Lots sacrifice, sacrifice, <laughs> pyramids, temples. 
Everybody has their superstitions. Yep. So the most, uh, I, I think we would say the most like famous ancient people would be the Egyptians, right? Yeah, you probably think so? the Egyptians. Probably the Egyptians. The oh, yeah. Old. So what if I told you that maybe certain, maybe off-brand Egyptians existed in North America? At North America, not South America. You'd have to elaborate. North America. In, in okay. the Grand Canyon region. And that the Grand Canyon was man-made and dug out over over the course of several thousand years. How would you feel about that? It is clear that there's nowhere else like that. Yeah, that no one would come up with that idea because it would be a really stupid idea Mm -hmm. to just make a giant canyon that is incredibly inconvenient for everyone to get around and cross. Because you know originally it was inhabited. Because it was originally a fucking inhabited. pyramid in the middle of the bum fucking nowhere. Well, actually, hold on. Before I go into this conspiracy, I actually have another conspiracy <laughs> about. Okay, so about actual Egyptians. Hold on, I'm t- taking a total side road. I want to. I want to get this out here before I go deeper into this. Uh, so you know the Sphinx yeah, in Egypt, yeah. how it has the human head and everything. Uh huh. I have a theory that that wasn't always a human head. And that whatever civilization was there beforehand had actually, like, crafted the Sphinx with an actual, like, Sphinx head and everything, or cat head, or whatever it was. Whatever was the dominant species. Yeah, and that was their, yeah, like, the leading tribe there. Like, that was, like, a deity to them. Or that was, like, a symbol of their power or their worship or something. And then when the, you know, at the time, modern Egyptians... Like that we know, the ancient Egyptians came in and took over that region. Whoever was the first god emperor or god king, Pharaoh, fuck, I couldn't remember the word Pharaoh, uh, of the Egyptians, decided that, hey, that's their god, I'm their god now. And made made them carve his face into the Sphinx. And that's why it's got a human head now. So a revision, okay. So that's what my god. Do that. you think it would have been the I'm curious. before? Before? Yeah, before. what would be the before god? Was it just like a cat, or I'm curious. I'm assuming that these people must have worshipped either the animals they hunted, or for being provided, or maybe um, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe they realized the power of the power of a lot of those larger cats. And they thought if they worshipped to them, they wouldn't harm them. And um, one of the pharaoh's sons got eaten by a cat, and he was like, "Ah, oh, shoot! Guess they're not gods. <laughs> Guess they're not gods. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Ah, oh, damn. Still be... worshiping them doesn't yeah. work. M- maybe. <laughs> and they're not done the head yet. I'll yeah. just set it. Well, up this was this was before head. like actual Egyptians. I, I think it was before. I think it's been confirmed that the Sphinx is older than the Egyptian civilization. So there's really? a sil- yeah. There was a. I think it's I been. I, I'm. That. I'm fairly certain that's actually a fact that it's older than actual Egyptians and another, another, uh, civilization had actually created it beforehand. Hmm. It's not as big as the pyramids or anything like that, but it's still pretty big. No. But yeah, I, I, I'm fairly certain in that, 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 that that's a fact. Huh. But I don't really know. Oh, hey, I- I never really give thought to the Sphinxes uh, at all. Now that I think about it, it's kind of weird to kind of backtrack to them because I feel like when most people think of uh, Egypt, they think straight to the pyramids. Yeah, m- most of the time that is the case. Uh, but... I like to think about the Sphinxes though, because the Sphinxes are just kind of these cool chimera creatures. Yeah, but I'm also Bruh. a giant nerd, so for t- um... I guess basic geometry doesn't excite me as much as it would for some. When I was in Washington for a little bit, um, I mean, for the time that I grew up there, uh, they actually had in the uh, the science exhibit in the uh, Seattle Plaza, uh, they had the uh, the the actual like Egyptian artifacts and like, um, like tomb shit uh, on display and whatnot. And bruh, Ooh. their jewelry is fucking ridiculous. Everything is just fucking actual gold, and I'm like, why? What the fuck? <laughs> like, even an urn was, just like, pure gold, and just, I don't know. You, I know that doesn't sound as, like, cool as, as it actually is, or anything, but... Then that's, like, a just, big deal. 
Pretty but neat. man, I would love to bring that back. Like, where's our, our Egyptian jewelry back in modern day, man? I would yeah. fucking a lot of the. We need the, some ancient I, civilization drip in modern day, bro. A yeah, lot of like of the, the beetle cool. and, and like the scarab imagery is fucking. I don't know. It just it looks it's so neat. nice. What happened to like? You know, modern combat. I mean, I understand like our modern day stuff is made for stealth and like concealment mm-hmm. and everything. But back in the day, it was just about looking fly as fuck and just <laughs> killing each other, looking as stylish I mean, as possible. I mean, it's still kind of that way. We got to be tactical, but we do have to be tactical. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that it's not as like you know, so if you're a high ranking officer, it's not like ribbons on your chest. It's the fucking, you know, how much fucking frilly you have on the helmet. <laughs> or you're wearing like fucking something. green pack 40 on your fucking chest. Yeah, you, you like get a, a fancy cape. set of extra bars on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, you got a fucking like feather in your cap or some shit. Yeah, Call that shit back macaroni. in the day, you got a fancy plume or you'd be given like a cool bottle with some dude's old bones or blood in it to be like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> the king grants worse. you these massive pauldrons draped in your country's colors. Well, I mean, a lot of that armor, or if we're talking about, like, normal, like, um, medieval kind of renaissance knight armor, they're still pretty, uh, they're still able to move in that motherfucker. So. Oh, yeah, they were limber. Limber as fuck, dude. Yeah, so it depends unless, on the armor and how it was designed. I was about to say, yeah. unless it's some wacky fucking cylinder box crap. Well, most of it, most people didn't actually wear like full plate, full plate a majority of the time. They oh. wore like half plate. Half plate's a lot more practical. <laughs> I yeah, guess talking horses plate, too. You, you know, like the first like, uh, bu- I guess bullet repelling armor was basically just pants. Are you fucking serious? Like cast iron? That, that does oh not surprise me. God. It was essentially like cast iron that people were putting on their bodies. Um, actually, in Red Dead Redemption 2, in the online mode, I think it was in single player 2, but I remember it from the Red Dead Online. Uh, it, it, this is a real thing. In Australia, they made, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I think it was late 1800s. I think I want to say it was like 1890. This Australian guy, or group, or maybe it was the actual fucking army. I don't remember. Uh, essentially, it was all cast iron fucking like knight armor, but it was tough enough to kind of deflect bullets. Oh my god! And so, in, but it was probably impossible. Heavy to walk as shit. Oh, dude, oh heavy god. as fuck. You had to be fit if you wanted to move in that shit. A literal you know, spark you armor. Oh! It really was though. <laughs> like it. it that shit could deflect bullets, and it was just this the Mach thick... One frying pan edition. Yeah. Holy fuck! <laughs> it was like OG <laughs> Iron Man. Oh uh, wow! But in uh, Red Dead Online, you wore that you wore the armor to blow up another guy who was wearing that same armor. Oh so boy! Fucking... Yeah. Hold on. So wait, you said they made those in real life? I gotta see. Yeah, that was a, that was a real thing. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can Google. Hold on. Yeah, I that... gotta see. I'll share. I'll share my screen. Now. Hold on. Let me. Let oh, me share my screen. Wasn't it like some old uh, gangster or something like that that started doing that? Maybe. I I feel like I read this somewhere. It was first done by like some Australian gangster or something. Armor of the Kelly Gang. That's what it is. This was real shit. Oh my god. (laughs) In 1879. Hold on, I'm going to share my screen. Hold on. Bro. Here we go. That's the that's the armor. That's armor of the Kelly fucking, Gang. What the? F- that's some Fallout shit yeah. right there. Holy! I mean, shit. for real. Oh, we shit. got some bandits up in this bitch. Uh, uh, Australian Bush Ranger <laughs> outlaw Ned Kelly devised a plan to create bulletproof armor and wear it during shootouts with police. He and other yeah. members of the Kelly Gang had their own armor suits and helmets and crafted plow, plow mold boards, either donated by sympathizers or stolen from farms. Yep. Why? Ugh. Australian guys. Royal Australian Armored Corps. 
They were just a few robbery short of making armor legally, yeah. but then turning around to use it for illegal reasons. Oh, here we go. It was this <laughs> better picture of like an illustration yeah. of them having the armor. I mean, it worked pretty decently, from what I understand. Is he is he alive? Nope. Ned Kelly death. No. Well, yeah, he was also in eighteen seventy nine. Dinah. Well, I know, but, like, uh, I imagine that, like, wait, how did he die? What was Ned Kelly's last words? Such is life. <laughs> <laughs> My man Such said a... it is what it is, you fucking... <laughs> oh, While no. a reporter standing on the yellow board wrote that Ned's last words were, Ah, oh, well, it's come to this at last. Such is life. Fucking... I guess yeah. he, he was hung. He was hung, yeah. That's what I figured. It was like oh, I figured he was dead. I just meant like, oh, yeah. like. Usually they would say like you know date of de or they wouldn't even say death. It would just be like date of birth. Yeah, I mean people have death dates as well. Oh yeah, what do you know? The fourth thing it says. There you go. Yep. So that was His that beard. Armor. <laughs> How did we get here? I don't remember. <laughs> I genuinely don't Welcome remember. To Welcome to podcasting. Things up in this I hope we're educating some of you loyal, loyal podcasters. <laughs> some of you, please, some of you loyal, loyal Jehovah folks. Yeah, I need, I need a a very in depth <laughs> diagram of how the fuck this conversation led to this point. I can only tell you how at the very beginning it started. I didn't even get to go into my conspiracy. <laughs> no, you didn't. I didn't get. I, I went on to a side a side quest conspiracy. A side quest. All right, I'm just gonna read right. this article. I'm just gonna read this article to introduce this. All right, all right, all right. On April fifth, nineteen o nine, a Phoenix newspaper called the Arizona Gazette published an article in its evening edition, which claimed. An e Egypto-Tibetan culture lived in the Grand Canyon. Running on the front page under the headline, Explorations in the Grand Canyon, the anonymous story claimed that the find was not only the oldest archaeological discovery in the United States, but one of the most valuable in the world. Furthermore, the article claimed that the project was under the direction of Professor S.A. Jordan, with a Smithsonian-backed adventurer, G.E. Kincaid. Kincaid? Kincaid. Kincaid. The, the duration of the article is an account of the find by G.E. Kincaid. In his narrative, Kincaid described a series of tunnels and passages with a cross chamber near the entrance in which stood a statue. The idol almost resembles oh. Buddha, though the scientists are not certain as to what religious worship it represents. Taking into consideration everything found thus far, it is possible that this worship is most resembles the ancient people of Tibet. Oh, fuck. God, I can't keep that voice up. It makes me want to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was like a voice or if it was just like... That was me trying to do like the uh, really boring narrators that are in all those fucking school things when the teacher turns shit on the smart board. Oh my god. Like the auto fucking... Yeah. King Kate allegedly Hello. says that at, he found an unknown gray metal <laughs> oh resembling God, platinum in the cave, does. and tiny carved heads were scattered on the floor. Urns bore mysterious hieroglyphics, the key to which the Smithsonian Institute hopes yet to discover. In another room, he's said to found mummies. Some of these mummies are covered with clay, and all are wrapped in bark fabric. Uh, but yeah, basically, um... So this guy, G. E. Kincaid, King uh, Kincaid, fuck Kincaid. Yeah, Kincaid. Uh, went and was discovering this shit with, uh, he was adventuring in the Grand Canyon. Found a cave. Went in the cave. Was like, oh shit, there's stuff in this cave. And when he started going through, he's like, oh fuck, there are more tunnels. Oh, I'm gonna get lost. I need to go back and get help. Goes and gets help. So, so they start discovering, they're like, hey, this could be a really big archaeological discovery, but we're going to need money to get it. Let's contact the Smithsonian, because they love shit like this. So they contacted the Smithsonian, and they started going through and started discovering stuff in this cave. And then one day, the government 
Oh, hold on, let me go come through. Like, let me get how the story grew. It, it's considered fake conspiracy, like, oh. and everything. But the thing is, the only thing really considering, like, you can't prove any of this stuff, is because the locate the exact locations that they are talking about, you can't travel to in the Grand Canyon due to being cut off by government. Uh, I always wondered blocks. about that. Though we weren't allowed to like go to the bottom. Like, yeah, you're not allowed to go to very specific areas in the Grand Canyon for no real reason behind for your own safety. Even people who are willing to sign waivers and stuff, which you can do in other areas that are blocked by government. You know, I don't want to say they're not sanctions, but like government block like no that's what they basically are because yeah. i've been there personally i mean yeah at a young age but i i do remember very vividly that yeah there was just very select locations you can fucking go to yeah. which i thought was the most dumb shit ever but there's essentially an entire city up underneath the grand canyon supposedly that we can't go to because the government has the entrances blocked off under under like armed guard by the way and you're not allowed to go near them. You can't. You can't get in the vicinity, even if you wanted to go, because the government says, "Well, we just don't want you to hurt yourself." And you're like, "I'm fine with hurting myself." At the bottom. Yeah. They don't want you to fall down in the, in the cave. At the and bottom of the canyon. Well, you guys allow. That's why you guys need armed guards. Well, the problem is in this article. It said they found a lot of like gold statues, a lot of riches, and everything like that. Like just these artifacts that should be, but. It defeats. It defeated a lot of the science and history that we knew about the United States beforehand. Mm. And I don't know if it's just a thing of. I would love to go there. It could yeah. really. <laughs> it could really just destroy our comprehension of human migration, or uh, maybe a civilization that was so advanced that it ended up killing itself. You know. Yeah. How will we ever understand it if we don't try? I don't know. And you, you can't. I can't even say that it's real because well, there's no. I know. There's no evidence or anything. But you like. Uh, there's a video. But it is watching. really weird that there are armed guards just sure. randomly somewhere in the Grand Canyon. Armed guards, clearly <laughs> visible like... ca caverns that you can go into that you're not allowed to be into, but because the government says so. I have a feeling it was along the lines of, all right. We need places to go set up secret places to do things secretly. And then they were like, well, people haven't found these caves in the Grand Canyon. And then, oh. like, a few weeks later, some asshole walks in and finds these caves. It's just like, oh, shit. He wasn't supposed to find here. <laughs> he he, he walked in. There's, like, know. 40 fucking U.S. soldiers all playing poker or some shit like that. Drinking some kind of radioactive fluid that's giving them superpowers. Oh. They fucking, you know, con instead of contacting the Smithsonian, they actually contacted the government first, aka giving them the space, and now yeah. they're just like, oh, well, you know what? Nah, that well, wasn't real. The what Smithsonian's on the Smithsonian's uh funded by the government. It's a government like museum. Yeah. Oh. So in a sense, yeah, they basically did that. I thought uh, they were separate entities. The Smithsonian yeah, but is an institution, not an institute. Anyone who really worked for them would know that. Third, when the article is read in full, it seems like a regurgitation of the 19th and early 20th century stories about Lumerian and Mu. In fact, even if the paper were blameless in the affair, the alleged Mr. Kincaid, for whom no Smithsonian record exists, which, I mean... That's uh, not it, really hard to get rid of. That's not really hard to get rid of, but especially not back in 1909. Yeah. When literally like, everything was handwritten, put into a file. Well, I mean, they had typewriters. but Yeah. I never thought I'd see well, the I mean, day being it, like, oh, it's one of these things. It's, paper. it's one of these things. It's like, I mean, this guy never existed when you literally had the power to just get rid of all documentation of him if you wanted to. Well, I don't think it's, it's necessarily that he didn't exist. It's just that he doesn't have any records in the Smithsonian. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, wow. He doesn't wow. have any records in that thing. In that, that thing. You know, 
chooses to put things in it. Like they could just cut ties with them and just throw away his file, you know? Like, yeah, basically. Pretty yeah. much. They're like, hey, they they were like, hey, we're funding this excavation. Talk and the government's talking. Hey, this might not be the best idea because if people start getting worried or freaked out, that will probably ruin my my election. So how about we just cut yeah. this, block it off, say that it's too dangerous, and never question it again. Okay. And then okay. after that, it's just like, well, now we have to maintain this stupid lie. Now we have to maintain this stupid lie as to why we did this. The government can't be corrupt. <laughs> Ugh. Who was president during 19... Hold on. Uh, it was Roosevelt. Was he president in 1909? Yeah. It, uh, I literally found a thing. Uh, president... 1908 President Teddy Roosevelt wanted to declare the Grand Canyon off-limits to all timber and mining operations. Uh, oh, that's weird. Uh, there's also Boyle, so that's uh, why President the Taft. President Taft was 1909 to 19 to 1913. Weird. Uh, so maybe this site I'm using is fucking wait wrong. On. President know. of the United States and later became the tenth Chief of Justice. Uh, what year? What are you saying? Let's say 1918. Who's it's a 1908. I don't know. Woodrow. Oh yeah, 1908 was uh. 1908. William, nope, he's still tapped. Hold on, when did when was Roosevelt president? He was in the First World War. Yeah, I think so. That would be like way off. Hold on, or maybe he was in Second World War. When did? I think he was First World War. Conspiracy so, galore. Like, we uh, know nothing oh, of our own history. Roosevelt served Dude. as president from 1933 to 1945. I'm Canadian. I have every right to not know this stuff. <laughs> I mean, of course you do. Just saying, I know nothing. Oh, Theodore Roosevelt served. Wait, what the fuck? Presidential term, 1901 to 1909. Oh, because fucking Taft was elected after him. That makes sense. Taft was 1909 to 1913. Hold on. I'm so confused. <laughs> How did we get here? Good work. The, this podcast yeah. is just going to show how much we know about history. <laughs> Not much, apparently. <laughs> no, t I was yeah. right. 1909 to 1913 was William Taft's presidency. But that's okay. That that's what the magic of technology is for. Is all about. So, what do you guys think? Do you think it's possible that the Smithsonian and or the U.S. government covered up the possibility of an ancient civilization that was here before the Native Americans? I could totally believe caves. For sure. But... Definitely caves. Mm. You think you think that there is just a statue sitting in a cave in the Grand Canyon that somewhat resembles Buddha? It's, I imagine it being dusty as fuck and just by itself i don't know maybe yeah i could see something like that even if it wasn't even like a bunch of a tribe of worship maybe just one desperate fuck in the desert do you think maybe that's where they're <laughs> hiding all the midgets <laughs> Shut that's, up! that's the oh secret entrance God, the, secret the mole people lair the mole people lair <laughs> the lizard people lair the they've just apartment only they can <laughs> Ugh. They've just established such a oh tenuous alliance. God. The American people need to stay out. I feel like only a few <laughs> amb ambassadors ever leave. Oh my god! All right, here I found oh, that website a with uh, a public library. Uh, the Grand Canyon and Egyptian artifacts. A rumor that the Smithsonian Institution covered up an Egyptian site found in the Grand Canyon dates from an article that was published in the front page of the Arizona Gazette on April fifth, nineteen oh nine. Uh, exploration of the, blah, 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 blah. the Smithsonian was supposed to have been a sponsor of the expedition. The Smithsonian Institution has received multiple, many inquiries about this over the years. The story is not true, but continues to be repeated. Uh, actually, there's yeah. a video. Hold on, there's a video. I was I about to say, why don't we have anybody recently to go down there? See, I don't know. Well, I mean, or is can't. that the damn government? Now I was about to say, being or... locked off. Uh, I so recently the doctor. reason this came across my this came across my feed was that uh, it just it just popped up my YouTube 
and I, I clicked on it. I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. And then I got another thing on Twitter that was talking about it. I'm like, okay, that's weird. I open up Snapchat, and the first thing I see on my fucking Snapchat, like, things that might interest you or whatever the fuck it is, the little, like, really shitty news story things that they have that are horrible. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it was something about this. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, hey, no! But there's somebody, oh. there's this guy who actually called the Smithsonian and this guy is a total like kook in my opinion like yeah. this guy's kind of crazy i think in my opinion so i don't really know how trustworthy he is uh um, probably not but i'd love to hear his side regardless but it's him he was on hold with the smithsonian i'm gonna pull it up and show you guys i'm gonna play a little bit of this clip this is from the y files the guy's a million subscribers so i don't think it's really gonna hurt this guy if I show his little video or show his video. It's not a little video. This video has one point. I guy... mean, it's a podcast. It's not. Yeah, it's a podcast on a channel that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Hold uh, up. I'll full screen this. Hold on. Hello. 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 Hold on. Hello. Can you guys hear it? Uh, no. Hold on. Welcome to your room. Uh... <laughs> are you, oh yeah, you live with me. You can just come in my room and listen to it. Yeah, I come to your recording <laughs> booth. Are you able to hear it, Jared? Probably. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay, cool. We're gonna wait for Dada to make his way. I have arrived. Hurry up. Right. Here we go. I'm a. Uh... If I turn up on my Yeti, it shouldn't turn it up on the entire computer, should it? Uh, it shouldn't. All right, here we'll just. It's I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, okay. I was on hold a long time. How can I help you? Um, they transferred me to Marion. Yes, this is Marion. Okay, great. Uh, my name is AJ, and I'm with the Y Files. We're a YouTube channel that covers oh, mysteries. Are you so so his hands the so Y Files pretty. is a channel on YouTube. Yes. Okay. Okay. Why, I wanted to talk eyes. to you about an article that was in the Phoenix, Arizona Gazette in 1909, uh -huh. and really they sent me to you. I was hoping to ask you a couple of questions about that. Okay. Let me stop you. No Egyptian artifacts of any kind have ever been found in North or South America. Sounds like you've given that speech before. Yes, I get this call a couple of times a year. I can tell you that the Smithsonian has never been involved in anything like this in the Grand Canyon or anywhere. So, G.E. Kincaid? <laughs> there is no record of anyone by that name ever working for the Smithsonian. The whole thing is a hoax. Yeah, that's the prevailing belief, but the Smithsonian has been accused of covering this up, so... Yeah, I don't have a response to that. You probably don't want to talk about giants or giant skeletons, huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, you don't. That's the. <laughs> okay. Damn, babe, she just. So like, that was the whole. I don't have a response to that. Dead ass was never trained to actually like respond and to any know, kind of question. What? Just say that he never worked here. It's like, bro, the bro. accusation isn't that he worked here. It's that like, hey, he contacted you guys to get someone who like helps out the Smithsonian by finding something does. Not required to have worked for them. Yeah, it's not My supposed to have worked for them by I, any means. I just hated the way he ended that. Like, everything sounded like a normal, like... Oh, no, I think normal. that might have been a it's fake like, phone call, to be honest. I'm not know, shitting you. I, I think I think I'm, he staged up that phone call. It, it, like, I mean, this is totally the... the this is totally the answered so quick... This yeah. Was like, mm. Well, no. Uh, see, it, I I I played it a little ahead, but he was actually saying that he was on hold and he ran back into the room. Hold on. Yeah. Like he uh, yeah. The room. He, he could hear the here. Uh, if you got here, I'll actually pull this back up so you guys can hear it. Oh my goodness. Or so Our Jared can hear it. Listeners, you got to deal with this guy again. I'm sorry, guys. Here. Yep. Hey, the media hasn't changed much. Unfortunately, that's, that's true. But many people believe the story is real, the and the Smithsonian is covering yeah. it up. I don't know what's up with that. Smithsonian Public Relations, Marion speaking. Oh, so oh, you oh, don't oh, want to oh, talk oh, about oh, giant oh. skeletons, bro. bro. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, he just r runs back into the fucking room. Okay, I'm not sure if it's just because I'm colorblind or something with my screen or something or what, but is his, like, face... Does it look like he's has like a weird mask on or something or like is wearing makeup it's like he around his eye got, like he might be wearing hands makeup. Are definitely colors. wearing some like makeup and there's some very deliberate edges to he definitely could be 
He definitely could be wearing makeup. It could be the lighting that he has as well. I don't know. He just something was off about. Like, <laughs> Dude, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I watched. I watched. Just, I watched. Just I watched hands, honestly, he he looks just like he's got a tan. It could be. Can I mean, I was. On his face? I watched this video. I don't know what's up with his fish that he. It's I him. It's him speaking as the fish in a higher pitch voice in response I'm to himself. Guessing... That is something for the kiddos to enjoy. I mean, not gonna lie, it's kind of entertaining, but then, like, I guess you can get more of your radical ideas through a little character like that without losing the entire audience. I mean, the guy seems like a decent enough person on his own. I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not gonna, like, down on this dude by any means, but. Yeah, because we're definitely not conspiracy not, talkers. Just no, no, no. I, like, this guy is definitely on a different plane than we are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just maybe he went on vacation or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he could have maybe like he just had a little I more just, of a tan. That distracted me so much during that video, and I don't know it, why. I, I, I don't had a think... moment where I'm like, I, he looks like someone that knows Trisha Paytas, but I don't yeah. know who that would be. <laughs> 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 That's oh, all I can think of. I'm sorry. The, I mean, like you're I right said, though. I'm sure he's a fantastic person, but like, the, like I said, the tan made me think. Kind Fish of that. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. I love you. I don't know. I don't want to be mean on this guy. This guy could have. Like I said, I'm not. Being, hey, I this guy could be you. totally cool. Like for all yeah. I know. And like, like I said, hey, you know, he might be. Right. That that phone call could have been real for all I know, but I just don't think it was. Yeah. Bro, if it was real, can I just say, whoever that receptionist is, God bless, man, she yeah, had she, her. She was, had that. She like, was ready. She had that script. Like she knew what was coming. <laughs> In... Look, some some of the calls She's like, like that, that dude doesn't exist. Yeah. Day. But she was prepared. She yeah. was, I wouldn't I be surprised. Call, like three times a year, buddy. I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if, like, being a Smithsonian receptionist, you constantly have one screen pulled up with every like with like several files of things that you need oh, to be ready to get a call about, like alien carcasses. Uh, fucking, <laughs> fucking, fucking the, the Grand Canyon cover up, all sorts yeah, of things. Even... Just one receptionist is just there to cover up all of the cover ups. Oh no, it's not just one the reception. It's it's a lineage of receptionist. <laughs> so like, her, it's been going on since her great grandmother has just been going down the line of like, all right, sweetie, now your only job will be to be a receptionist for the Smithsonian. You'll get paid fifty thousand dollars a year and nothing more, and you'll be happy as fuck. <laughs> if they're Dude, born Grandma male, if they're born this... male, they get executed. It has to be a female receptionist. Oh but, no! <laughs> but Grandma, I just wanna, I just Must wanna be go. You be will be a Smithsonian receptionist, and you will like it, sweetie. Oh, oh my god! I wanna go save people. Fifty thousand dollars a year. That's not minimum wage. It's better than what you'll ever achieve because you're kind of a failure. But I'm 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 not going to lie. I'm getting a doctorate. I'm going. Don't be getting a doctorate. How to answer a phone, bitch? (laughs) That's because I don't want to talk to you, mother. Because you always tell me I have to work at the Smithsonian. I'm your grandmother. Your mother is already working at the Smithsonian. Yes, exactly. I get you two mixed up. (laughs) Terrible. I don't want to deal with the Smithsonian, Grandmother. Hello, Smithsonian Human Resources. How can I tell you to go fuck off today? Bruh. If he called and they got him, there's no way they got Human Resources. There's no way. Oh, no, he got Public Relations or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, he probably got one of the... He got one of those people specialized in that shit. He got a he he got the janitor to pick up that knew more than the actual people. Hmm. No, we don't have the black boxes from nine eleven. Get out of here! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Jesus, boy. the uh, amount of fucking stupid phone calls they must get. Jesus uh, Christ! Uh, I can only imagine they must all be. I can assure you, sir, the T Rex is assembled correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, jeez. I imagine my brother would do something like that. Do some shit like that. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, this, there's no way this is in the right spot. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna go find the management. No, no sir, no. Walt <laughs> Disney did not I, freeze. This is wrong. There's no way <laughs> that goes there. Oh my look, god! Look, look, I've played so much Ark Survival Evolved. <laughs> I know I the know structure. What a dinosaur. I, I know, know my dinos. Oh my god! My I brother's name Dino. Game. That's how much. I'm doing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And the most ironic part was I didn't even give a fuck about dinosaurs. He was the big dinosaur nut. It's so Correct. ironic. It's so funny. And yet you're the one that with that. that you're and yet I have that. the nickname. <laughs> oh, You've been granted oh, this blessing. Evolution. This power is yours. <laughs> Unlimited power. Wait, Jared, I don't know if you know. My checks are written to Dino. I don't know if you know this. I did not know this. <laughs> yep. That's because um Swade's um Swade's sister's wife um is my boss. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. And they know of my dino nickname. So Oh and it kinda caught on. So I already not... had it on like I had username now... crap for my banking account with Dino already. <laughs> But now I officially have like checks and banking statements with that. You, <laughs> you are now legally considered a yeah. dino. <laughs> it's a legal nickname, boy. Dude, I made that name for you as a joke back in 2010. And here we are. How full on it's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How long it will continue to go, I don't know. But I'm going to keep it going. Explain it. And I'll pronounce you Mr. Once. and Mrs. Dino. <laughs> Or at the very least, there will be a tombstone somewhere. With... No, no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> Dino's significant other has to be sore. No. Uh, <laughs> no. No. Well, no it's not allowed. No. <laughs> yes. on the floor, Dino Please. and his I feel like I'll be lucky as in the comments. to find someone that deals with the nickname being in existence Sar. in the first place. And... Hey Dino, hey Sor. In the comments, yeah. There's let, no let way. I don't know what you want him to be. They would have to be Should... deaf or something. There's so it would have to be something wrong. Or the with coolest, them. No the way. coolest motherfucker on the join... planet. <laughs> you may only join in holy matrimony when you get our blessing, and they get our blessing to be forever referred to as Sor. As Sor, so no. they can be dinosaur. That's what's. No, I can't yep. say that. It's too late. The yep. damage is done. And then done. Like, <laughs> your ship will be dinosaur. <laughs> it couldn't be stopped. Do your thing, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag sure, dinosaur. I mean, dinosaur. I never used, I never Dino used Twitter, XR. and I was going to get deleted from it to begin with. Uh, oh, God. That was okay. never long for Twitter. That was amazing. <laughs> it was Jesus so good. Christ. It's now been written in stone forever on the internet. Yep. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of crap that's written on the internet. Oh, even, hell yeah. Oh, brother. Don't it's worry. Okay. Don't worry. Like the 22 film. people that watched this episode. Yeah. Will remember. They will remember. Watch this be the episode that point. blows up. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> Just never know which one's all due. Because of hashtag right. 23,000 views. All because of dinos. Hashtag dinos, dino XOR. I would fucking, oh god. Looking for a sore in my life. I'll be, I'll be straight <laughs> up. I'll be annoyed. I'll be annoyed. I'll be irritated. <laughs> You'll be irritated, but we'll love you forever we'll for it. Forever. And maybe, maybe sore will love you forever. forever. If the internet yeah. does that, then I'll be disapp I'll be annoyed, but disappointed. <laughs> annoyed and disappointed. <laughs> Oh, oh, good. God. So yeah, what we learned today is the government does want you to know that there was an ancient Egyptian Tibetan Bro, race in in the Grand Canyon. If I Canyon. ever ever travel back that direction for some reason, I I will find a way. I swear to God, I don't care if I fucking. Get a slap on the wrist or some shit. I want to see what's down there. Bro. You're probably gonna get I'm shot. Gonna get... Yeah, if Bro, you go you... down there. They've got uh, armed guards, like dude. physically, even like with like some fucking binoculars. Bro, just imagine like, like this this fucking army recruit who's just been stationed at the Grand Canyon guarding a cave. He's like, "Don't come any closer!" And he fucking shoots you, lay down. He dies. Oh like, my oh. god! 
<laughs> Don't worry, you son. Give me a warning shot. Uh, Don't worry, son. You defended American soil. What am I protecting? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm not allowed to go in there. Allowed to know. Nobody's just nobody's allowed in there. It's like the Look, greatest. I don't know. It's not my shift yet. Oh my Shut god. The fuck up so I can nap. You guys, you guys seen Cody and Kids Next Door, right? Yes. Of course. That's where they hold the fourth flavor. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth flame is in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> no, you can't see it, but I'm sure you felt it. My, 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 my face. Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unrelenting joy, no doubt. Oh, that's what they're trying to hide from everyone. No, but I swear to you, like I said, the best I, flavor. If I pass that way, I will have a high-powered fucking telescope, binocular, or something. Get like a, you know those uh, what are those those sonar uh waves? I'll get a that drone. You can, well, no, there's these sonar things where you can hit the ground with, and they reverberate, and they can kind of show you what's in the ground. Yeah, oh, like a seismic like scan or whatever. Yeah, something like that. A that somebody just went above that area. I think the airspace is actually blocked off too. Oh my yeah. god! I don't think you're allowed to Bro, fly over it. It's not that serious. It's just. Bro, rocks. I don't look. I'm telling you, if you came out today and just greeted an alien on national TV, nobody would give a fuck. Nobody would care. Like, oh, cool, they're I'm real. Like, thank God, something interesting finally fucking happened that isn't war or death. We don't give a shit. Nobody cares. Oh, we'd be more worried who'd find them first. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, we don't want fucking uh, Billy Jean with his fucking shotgun in the back. Finding fucking little green on the fucking planet and being like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill that fucking thing. How does that shit taste?" And fucking blast Yo, away with a fucking gonna look real slug. good on my wall. Alone. No, I'd rather the fucking president of the United States greet him with open arms and be like, "Hello there, buddy." <laughs> the fucking sleepy Joe. Uh, fucking. Oh my god. I guess it depends on who's president at the time, huh? Yeah, I'm oh, like, current one. I think well, I, I think Joe wouldn't be too bad greeting an alien. Trumpy would be hilarious. Trump would be. Per- I think Trump. The would be alien funny. would be like that. Oh, Trump would exclusively Trump, be funny, oh but it'd be a terrible. It'd idea. be so Dude, funny. We'd Trump be, would be like, we'd be an intergalactic war in no time. But no, god damn no. it, if that shit be, would be fucking the funny way as I fuck. imagine it'd be like it'd be like, well, hello there. I'm glad you landed here. You could have landed anywhere else, but you landed in America. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but America's pretty good right now, and you picked a great type to land. <laughs> Yo, the perfect, the perfect time to land was now. The, the, he, 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 that motherfucker be on CNN like, you, you see, the aliens finally came when I was president. They knew that <laughs> the United States, the United States would... is the best it's ever been, and the aliens finally decided <laughs> yeah. that hey, this guy's pretty cool. I can't wait to come down and try out his Trump labeled suits. And you see, I have my little oh, green friend, a, a form-fitted suit. How do you like it, little baby? Oh, pop, 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 pop. What yeah, anybody see, he says, it. See, he Trump's likes it. presidency was definitely interesting to that watch. That was the most memeable least. presidency <laughs> I think we've yeah. ever had. Next, oh, like, I dude. thought Obama was pretty memeable, but fucking Trump took the... Dude, I love Obama. Obama's was, presidency Obama was... was he was memeable because... because he was endearing. Yeah. Got it. I loved Obama's presidency so he much. He was a sweetheart. Trump was different because he was an idiot. <laughs> oh man! Oh god! I don't know, man. There was there was a lot going on during that time. There's a there lot. Were, of shit. There were a lot of things. There was a happened. lot going on with a lot of people during that time. That that shit was. I they just erased to see which fucking I, case was gonna fucking air quotes take about a presidency. Really, 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 that, like, it was it was bro. all kind of like. That whole time frame was comical from all angles. <laughs> Everybody was having a good time. Then COVID hit and ruined everything. Uh, and now we have Sleepy I Joe, which I mean, Joe's okay. Joe's, what I Joe, imagine, Joe's all like right. a more like right. Uguay is like in yeah. person, just not as just a little more mind like, gone. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. I I can't tell he's not all the way there, but he has he has good he has good intentions at heart, I believe. 
Yeah, I think he means well. It's just I think the he rest means of the people well. around him kind of take advantage of him. He's definitely being abused by his party, and I feel bad for him. Yep. Regardless of how you feel about him, he is being abused. He's by being his party. abused like hell. Yeah, I th- honestly, I think Joe just needs to rest at this point. He just needs to relax. He's too old for this shit. He is, dude. Like that man. Grandkids. I don't it's care. If, look, I, I'm not a political guy like too bigly. But I don't care how you feel about Joe Biden. That man has done a service for pretty much his entire life. It's time for him to, you know, step down and, you know, just take a break. Finish out this presidency. Just just take a back seat. You know, just enjoy the country that you helped shape. You know, like, just enjoy enjoy the time you have left with your family. Don't be stressed out. Yeah, don't be dealing with all that. Don't crap. be dealing with all that. Like you, you, Especially uh, now. At that oh. age, you should not be enduring that kind of stress. No, just go hang out with your like grandkids, your kids. Yeah, and and enjoy life. Just enjoy life. You're good to go, man. Yep. Because man, we are seething for people to fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <to> God. yeah. <laughs> we are waiting, foaming at the mouth. And that goes for like a lot of people in Parliament too. Like these people who are in their like late sixties, early seventies, and shit. Just sit down. Just, just take a back seat. Enjoy your life. You've made your cash. You have yeah, your family. Made it to retirement age. You're, you're good to go. Like but there's nobody, a reason for that. You nobody else that, in America. Right? Yeah, there's got to be. I know there's got to be. But guys, come on. Like, let let the young guys get a shot. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. We're never going to unless we I learn. What it is? There's not a lot of young guys. There's not a lot of young guys. Like, <laughs> no young person wants to get into politics for fear of being rejected by all their friends and family. I, I don't know about that. I, I'm sure that I feel like there's no, like, real clear path as to how to do it. There is. You know, because you, other than, like... You have two parties to choose, to choose from at this point. You can run independent, but everybody says that independent is just, like, a waste. So there's not much that you can do. And you don't want to choose, like, Democrat or Republican because they both suck. I know it's, like, cutthroat, but, like, it, uh, nobody's tried, like, picking one side and then splitting off. Or I guess that's probably been tried you and kind of just gets stuck. You have, like, left-leaning Republicans and you have right-leaning leaning Democrats. Oh, yeah, I guess like, that makes the, sense. they exist and everything. It's just a matter of, like, voting in the candidate that's going to push more. So... I tried to explain this to some people. So in South Carolina, South Carolina is a red state, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah. (laughs) So if you're a, you know, more democratic, like left leaning person in South Carolina, don't try to vote for it's because you're not going to get the majority. Don't try to vote for the democratic candidate. Try to vote for and promote the most left leaning right wing candidate you can. So is the person that's going to that, you know, can be elected, can viably be elected, uh, go for the person that's going to most align themselves with your views, even though they might not be identical. But, but get, it's close enough, but close enough, because then if you get that like minded person in there, then you can work your way of like, you know, not pro like uh, promoting and like advertising and just trying to convert people. Hey, it's been pretty good lately with this candidate, right? It's been pretty nice, right? Like things have been good. I mean, well. even just why don't we try just country. why don't we just try something new? You know, things like that. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but that it, no, it made it's sense totally in my head. Oh, okay. I don't know if it made sense. I completely zonked out for like that entire talk. I guess it doesn't really affect Jared being Canadian. <laughs> So, I don't even think it's necessarily that. I just, I literally just got distracted by something and tuned out. Is it something what? you want to share about? Um, I was trying to find something to discuss because I'm here. Yeah. And I felt like trying to oh, yeah. apply something interesting. Yes. Um, but one of the things I was looking into was uh, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yes, wait, but just yelling at me. Why, yeah. why don't you be a DM or fucking whatever the fuck? Oh, you? I, I could be. I could be. I um, I could talk about that outside of this, but um, like, there's the movie coming out. But uh, are you fucking serious? Yeah, there's a movie coming out. But um, mm. there we go. Scared. What I care more about is uh they're playtesting one D D. 
which is the new rule set. It's the new edition. They did right. they did a battlefield where they went back to one. Okay. But uh so they've updated and changed how like the rules work. And I don't know. I was wondering if you guys heard anything about that. Not really. No, this is news to me. A movie? Oh my god! I knew <laughs> I about. Can go back to the movie. <laughs> I knew. I knew. I heard about the movie. I didn't know much about. it. I didn't know that they were going back to like. I don't know. First like era. One. Yeah, like square one shit. Um. Well, I don't think it's going to be like actually square one. Um, to my understanding, it's just going to be the newest edition. The most annoying thing and the most controversial thing that I've been hearing the most about is the fact that it will have a, uh, it won't let people make, like, fan content for it. So, you know, all of, like, the secondary sales market for D&D, where it's, like, people making stories and campaigns yeah. And then selling those or having Patreons for like models and stuff like that. Oh, so uh, they're uh, taking more of a games workshop kind of approach. Yeah, they're they're hammering down on it, which a lot of people have been upset. Understandably um, so. Yeah, then there's also like rules and balance changes. I don't know enough about it to actually like <clears throat> talk too much about it. But I that's was... so weird that they restrict like people making art. Essentially, what the I fuck? don't think it's art. Like, if you're just a DM doing homebrew, but if you're selling something, I think that's where it becomes. A big I guess. Thing. I don't know. Like, uh, I yeah, guess, uh, aren't there things where people like pay to be a part of certain campaigns? Uh, yes. There's things where people pay to be part of certain campaigns. There's uh, Patreons out there for people who make um, special, uh, like one shots and stuff like that for DMs who can't come up with their own so similar to um curse of strahd and mm. you know i think that <clears throat> the you know, pre-made stories but these ones are just kind of designed to be a little bit shorter or maybe they're a particular setting or it's you know a new flavor like spell jammer that lets you kind of have a futuristic setting type of thing there's a whole bunch of different little supplements would be the best way of putting it that are all more or less fan made and they're taking that away and saying oh yeah for this new version of D, we're not going to allow people to do that anymore then won't Which, everybody just kind of do the old shit instead well that actually is one of the things that killed fourth edition is fourth edition on top of becoming much more wargaming which i have my own thoughts and feelings on that one um because things became more wargaming, it was less popular with some people. But yeah, I kind of remember more... people talking about that back in the day. Yeah. The other thing was that they also did this again. The reason they took it away for 5th edition is because, well, 4th edition was hated for that whole gaminess. And then on top of that, it also didn't let anybody make content, which is why Pathfinder became a thing. Because believe it or not, Pathfinder, the whole idea was to be 4th edition, but better. And would not exist had it not been for 4th edition. Yeah, learn from your fuck-ups. Yeah, but most people just stuck with 3rd uh, edition or 3.5. Yeah. Because 3.5 was like a small update that happened beforehand. We ran uh, a campaign on 3.5. Yeah, it's... Very different rule set. I don't like 3.5 to some extent, just because of how it did some of like martial classes dirty. Like, if I recall correctly, playing a paladin, it was better to just go as a cleric, uh, which was kind of a bummer. Yeah, just kind of obsoleted certain classes. Yeah. Aww. At least worse than limiting your options in a game. Literally about fucking options. Yeah. Ugh. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of depressing. Oh, what? Like, I don't know. I I hate Three limiting. I hate limiting players, you know? 
Especially people who are creative. But they want to make the money. They do want to make the money. Because you know that's what it's about. Yeah. And being able to produce your own content, especially out of something that's already existing, is something that I think it really has been driving a lot of popularity and things, most things today. Because certain games have only survived due to, you know, like mods and stuff. D &D say, I think less different, but... popularity, more longevity. Long, yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, like supplying more sustenance to, you know, something that's probably already been eaten so many times. Mm -hmm. I guess that's, you can, I can't really make that comparison to D&D because D&D is such a different title compared to like you know a modern like a video game or something you can compare it to modding the ability to mod a game yeah, yeah. Oh, which i mean I'd say the closest thing is like gene mod or forge yeah Where but i guess people get to make it it kind of helps feed itself because the community is what keeps the game alive rather than the developers having to constantly work and build something yeah yeah we're running on about an hour and ten minutes. Do you guys want to cut this podcast here? Yes. Um, I, yeah, I've got to get going. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Jared. And Love you, Faith. Thank sure. you Anytime. guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode of the Clown Town Podcast. We hope to see you guys in the next one. And for you join members, hope to see you over in the after show. So see you guys later. Bye-bye. All right. Take yeah. it easy.